So I had already made one fantasy football reference, yeah. Jenny, earlier in the show. Can I make another one? Can you please? So out in Arizona, I think people are excited about Kyler Murray and Marvin Harrison Jr. and Trey McBride as like fantasy options, especially on that side of the ball. Yeah. So we're not going to talk about McBride today, but you're seeing highlights here of what could be if Kyler Murray's healthy, he's got new weapons, and it could be a new day out in the desert there. A new day. Let's bring back Emory Hunt for some training camp star and cuts NFC West edition. Zara, the playbook, let's start with the Cardinals as we've led them there. Uh, your star, one of the two guys that we highlighted just now. Yeah, Marvin Harrison Jr. has done a lot in these training camp clips and practices that you've seen tweeted about, but he hadn't really played in games. But, you know, he's the number one option for them along with Michael Wilson. But so that's someone obviously we want to talk about. But keep an eye on Xavier Weaver out of Colorado, who's really been starring in the preseason games. But that I'm going I'm saying I'll have to say this receiving core for Arizona should hit the ground running literally. All right. So who are you cutting then? It's tough, man. You look at Michael Ojemedia, the defensive back, is because they drafted a lot of defensive backs in Arizona, and a lot of these guys are stepping up and playing well in these games as rookies. So someone, the veteran, is probably going to be one of those last cuts. But keep an eye on him coming back, bouncing back onto the roster after week one as he try to save some money. All right, so we'll go from the desert over to the San Francisco Bay Area, talk about the 49ers. Who's the star? Malik Mustafa out of Wake Forest, as I was grading this film, Tommy, there was one play in particular where he came from the deep third and ended up tackling the running back for a loss in the backfield. It's insane how fast he gets downhill, and he's been blowing up in these ball games. had a lot of big plays against New Orleans, and again, it helps ease Telefanga Nueva back into the foe, Hafunga, I'm sorry, back into the foe because this guy, Mustafa, is playing lights out. They just find these type of safeties out there in San Francisco. No need to apologize, Mustafa, Hufanga. It is tough, my man. It is not easy to get that <laughs> out all the time. Uh, you're John Lynch. I'm putting you in his shoes. Who are you cutting? This is a tough cut, but this is peak San Francisco. Cody Schrader, who we've talked to at the Combine from Missouri, the SEC leading rusher, he was undrafted, number one. That shouldn't have been, that shouldn't have happened anyway. He should have been drafted. But San Francisco does things like this. They're deep in the backfield. They'll cut a guy and pass him through waivers and then bring him right back, and we'll see him start by like week six. So keep an eye out for Schrader jumping back on that 49ers roster. But this is a packed room, as you see. And so they have to let somebody go, but they'll keep him around. I guarantee it. All right, you gave Jenny Dell a little bit of scare. I don't know if you heard it, but once you said that, she was like, Schrader is my guy. And Man. He's a fantastic Talk about, tailback. He is unbelievable. His story, just incredible. I'm a huge fan of that kid. Okay, but Emory brought it back because that's what they okay, do. Okay, Emory, you don't know, do that. Okay. It's my so whew. we saw that running back room. It was like a CVS list, by yeah. the way. Okay, uh, <laughs> going to the Pacific Northwest, Emory, the Seahawks, give me the star. A uh, little bit of a veteran here in Sam Howell, who, to be honest, didn't play bad in Washington last year, but just got caught up in a numbers game. So he's been taking advantage of his opportunity with the Seahawks playing really well in these games and showing you how valuable that experience is for a guy that got to start a lot of games last year. So I've been impressed to see how he's handled that situation, and now he's taking advantage of that opportunity. You know, it's funny just to keep it with Sam Howell, Emery. It didn't go well for him at the end there with the commanders, but there was such hype and optimism coming into last year and obviously Jaden Daniels now the signal caller there what's the like about his particular game how do you grade him from a talent evaluator perspective if you like Bo Nix you like Sam Howell they're the same player they both are athletes they both can uh, work touchdown to check down the passing game one of my favorite sayings and they also do a great job of just competing they don't let bad plays linger in their mind yes I may have thrown this interception but guess what I'm gonna come back and make the same throw I'm gonna make it better and this time it's going to be a touchdown. So you like that competitive nature about those guys. They started a lot of games. So him and Bo Nix are one of the same. So if you saw what Howell did last year, the defense was terrible in Washington. Denver has a better defense. So Bo Nix, in my opinion, should have a solid rookie season. All right, Sam Howell, fresh start, new team, new head coach. We'll see how it goes. What about the cut, Seattle? This is another one of those try to slide someone through the waiver wire. Soon Deata Anderson out of Grambling. I saw him up close and personal at the East West Shrine Bowl. And this is someone that looks to part off the bus. Look, 6'4", 245 pounds, tremendous ed edge rusher. Fits the motor with Mike McDonald, love to draft out there in Baltimore. 
he's going to get caught in his numbers game, but they want to bring him back into the fold because he's super athletic and tremendous off the edge. And then let's go to the Rams. Jordan Winnington, your star, especially at wide receiver. Yeah, this is he's gotten all the passes. <laughs> it feels like for Los Angeles out there during the preseason. And this is someone that was a star on special teams at Texas, which will be his way to get on his team for the Rams in the regular season. He had played running back, moved the receiver, did everything that he needed to do to be a great teammate. And you've seen that play out for the Rams here as a pro. So for me, because he has such a great start to the preseason, he's going to find a way on his roster because he can do all things and do them well. How does he fit, though, with the wide receiver room that has Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua? Special teams, he plays special teams. That's your ticket in. And once you get into that door, you, you have to force him to put you out. And because he's thrived on special teams in college, He's used to playing on these coverage units. He can also return in the pinch, so he can do a lot of different things. And that's the way you try to make the roster as wide receiver five or six on these NFL depth charts. And then with this one, interesting enough, your first like-for-like like star and cut. So you're cutting for L.A. and other receiver. Because of what I just talked about, Tommy, special teams and versatility, it will push a guy like Drake Stoops out of the door. Now, Stoops has played spring ball uh, earlier this spring for his dad, the Arlington Renegades in the UFL. So it's not like he won't be without of a job. Uh, but this is someone, because he doesn't play special teams and because he hadn't gotten the opportunities to star like Winnington has, that's why he gets pushed out as a, a bubble cut because of those things that I just listed earlier. Appreciate you as always. No more mini heart attacks to Jenny, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jenny. Don't do that to me, man. Don't.